Hi, I'm Kenneth Pilhaden from Solid. I'm here today at Helga Peterson's greenhouse. Helga Peterson is the inventor of the hydromat, which I'm going to demonstrate for you. This greenhouse has been uh, his hobby and test facility for more than 20 years. The hydromats in here have been, been here for more than 10 years, have been working every season. So let's take a look. Here's one of his absolute beautiful tomatoes. Mmm. Exquisite. This is really what it's all about, just getting really good results. So let's look what makes all this happen. Here's a hydromat, and it's been hanging here for more than 10 years. What basically, how it works is, you have a, a valve, which is connected to a normal water pressure. It could be one to two bars. And you regulate the flow here from 10 to 100 liters per day. The water then goes in the side and fills up the mixing vessel slowly. And the hydromat consists of two parts, the mixing vessel and the fertilizer vessel. The fertilizer vessel is quite simply a big bottle of fertilizer. You fill it up with fertilizer, any liquid fertilizer will do, but uh, of course you can choose a really good special uh, product developed for the hydromat. And here you adjust either 2 ppm or 4 ppm. Now inside the mixing vessel, it's easier to show you, I've got an extra right here, we have a siphon system. The water will be filled up in through here and will slowly rise. Once it rises to a certain level, it will activate that float on the fertilizer, giving it a precise amount of fertilizer, making this mixture of water into a 2 ppm or 4 ppm fertilized water. Also, once the water level reaches uh, this tube, in here this is a siphon system. A siphon system is uh, the same as you know where you suck on a pipe and it will start running by itself. This is what happens inside the vessel. So there's no mechanical parts of any kind, no electricity. Then the water will start slowly running out and the drip process will go. We can just look at a few dripping right here. We've got the tomato plants dripping away. And once the chamber is empty, you also see that uh, it'll have a break because uh, once the water level reaches the bottom, air will come into the system and it will stop dripping. It will stop dripping for as long time as it takes for the chamber to be filled up. And that's all depends on what you've adjusted the valve for. And another feature by, by this is that the water will always have the right temperature because it will, since it's filling up very slowly, uh, the temperature will be the same as inside the greenhouse. So you're never really putting cold water on your plants. While filling up is also a break for the plants. They won't be having any water, they'll be have time to breathe. And this is also a special feature. So you get a lot of extra things. You have, uh, number one, the fertilized water. Number two, it has the correct temperature. And number three, you get a break. And, well, actually number four, Inside the valve, there's also a temperature regulator. If the temperature rises in the greenhouse, the, the valve will give more water, and the same if it cools down. Actually, when it gets really cool, it will almost close. I'd now like to show you a typical installation. We have here the greenhouse, and in the back, the hydromat. The hydromat should hang from 1.5 to 2 meters high. You see the valve, which then goes up and fills the mixing vessel, and you see the feed tubes going down here along the ground. You also see that it's possible to have feed tubes 
not just at the ground, but also on a shelf. To do this, it's necessary to have these um, vertical uh, tubes. It's just a feed tube, which is placed up at the same height as the hydromet. We have one here, and we also have one at this end. This is to enable a second level of drip tubing. So from here you have the distributors, that's what we have here. It's basically a piece of pipe with five holes where you put the drip tubes inside. But it's also an extension fitting. You have them here, here, and here, where they are in line with the feed tubing. On the other side, we've used the Y pieces and then distributed the feed hose further away. But again, it's the same piece of fitting as we have here, but in this case we've added a plug at the end. Correct fitting of the uh, drip stakes. This is the feed hose. We've cut right through somewhere along the line. And here we have the drip stake with the drip tube just going right through. It's not being connected, it just goes through, keeps it in place. When you first install it, you should uh, leave it above the earth so you can see that each drip tube is actually dripping and once you've checked all this you can put them in the ground. Putting them in the ground you will uh, stop uh, calcium from depositing at the very end of the drip tube. Uh, adjusting the valve. To adjust the valve there's a small cup with ha which has a hole in the bottom and then when adjusting, you take off the tube, put the cup underneath, and wherever along these lines the water stabilizes, the level that it stabilizes, this is the amount of water per day. So if it stabilizes at the third line from the bottom, it's 30 liters per day, and so forth, between the 10 and 100 liters. Once adjusted, keep the cup somewhere safe and put the tube back on. Over here we see how the valve is assembled. Occasionally you might have deposits of some sort. You can take the valve apart and clean it and remove small stones or whatever could clog the valve. Well, it's that's that's it. What fertilizer should I use? You can use any liquid fertilizer but we recommend using special hydromat fertilizer which was developed by Helge Peterson together with the Danish uh, National Garden Association.